Hi, I'm Casey. Welcome back. Joined with Dr. Jenna Bentley from Lakeshore Vein and Aesthetics. And today we are talking about the big B, Botox. <laughs> Welcome back. Good Thank to see you. you. Good to see you too. All right. What can you tell us about Botox? Well, what do you know about it? Well, I'm a fan. Okay. So you've tried it before. I've tried it before. Okay. I think it's great, but I'd like to hear your... So what on earth is it? Well, yes, there's a lot there. of misconceptions out there about Botox. Um, and I think people often confuse them with filler. Right. So um, Botox is a neuromodulator. So it is a brand of a neuromodulator. There's other brands out there like Xeomin, Dysport, um, and they're all working in the same way. Okay. And their job is to relax the muscles involved in lines on the face that we don't like. So very safe. Um, it's been around for many, many years. First noticed, um, actually we're really blessed that kind of the inventors of Botox are in Vancouver. Oh. Uh, um, it's Dr. Jean and Alistair Carruthers. So um, they are... So surgeons. local. Yeah, kind of Kind local. of local. Yeah. And very passionate about it they so she is an ophthalmologist I think and she was she noticed um, in treating people with eyelid spasm that um, and she was using Botox that their wrinkles were going away mm. <laughs> and another medical application of it was trying to treat headaches and um, lo and behold people's forehead lines were going away as well as their headaches being relieved. So the blepharospasm, the eyelid spasm, and headaches, that kind of thing, they noticed this side effect of the wrinkles improving. And so they thought, hmm, we're onto something here. So it actually started for medical, medical purposes. Yes. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Now you, so is there different variations of Botox? There are and like, that's where you have to be careful about where you go and and what you're getting you want to have a clinic that's using the proper botox because right. you can get black market botox okay um probably not in canada right but in in other countries you can and um also want to be very clear when you're going which neuromodulator are you getting because i have been made aware of some clinics where you might go and they might lead you to believe it's Botox, mm -hmm. which is a brand like ketchup instead of tomato sauce, Kleenex okay. instead of tissue. And they're using um, Xeomin or Dysport or something else and, and leading the person to believe that they're getting Botox. So, so does that affect the, the effectiveness and the longevity? They are different. Um, I like Botox the best. It's, it's the tool I've used the most. So I, I know, I can predict what it's going to do in my patients. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only one we have at our clinic. Um, the others, they're just different. But if they're used by someone who's experienced, they can make them be predictable and get the results they want. So longevity will still be typically similar or the same? Similar, yeah, as long as it's dosed appropriately. Gotcha. And placement. I'm and sure placement, placement is... Yes. In my experience with it is huge. It is a big deal. Yes. yes. So you really have to know the anatomy and where you're placing yes. it and yes. educated on that and experience. Yes. yes. For sure. What would you say is the biggest misconception regarding Botox? Um well the the first one is I think people think um I know for sure they haven't done a ton of research when they say Oh, I don't want Botox because I don't want big lips. Right. And that's filler, of course. Right. Um, you can use Botox around the mouth to relax vertical lip lines and give a little bit of an upturn to the lip, but it's not something that makes your lips bigger. That's, that's filler and it needs to be done appropriately. Um, I think one thing that's really important to talk about is um, I think Botox at the outset wasn't named very well because right. it has the word toxin it yes. toxin yes. and it is based on the botulism toxin but right. it is made in a lab it's highly purified but all medicines are poisons it depends on how you use them right right so they need to be used properly and it is safe it is not botulism toxin but is based on that and the we are exploiting the good things that that molecule can do 
So it doesn't travel around your body. It doesn't act like botulism toxin, but it is based on that. Oh, that's very good mm -hmm. that, because I know in fact, that is for sure. I would say even with my friends, that is their main, scared of it. that is it. A lot yeah. of people are afraid because they automatically think. They that, shouldn't have called it that. I forget the name of it in Europe, but it's not Botox okay. and it doesn't have tox in it. So, right. So where do you, what age, I guess I'm going to start with, what age do you think is, is there an appropriate age you should start Botox? Well, I think it's important to start before you have ingrained lines. So um, the most common place to have it placed is here. Right. And it's to help with those angry 11s people get, those lines there, or worried or, or angry looking lines. If you think about a piece of paper that's been folded for so long that even when you flatten it out, it still has a crease there. Right. If you have lines like that, that even when you're at rest in your most peaceful, deepest sleep, you still have the 11s, Botox will only get you as good as when you're at rest. Oh, so interesting. So okay. if you do it before you have yes. permanent ingrained lines, you're yes. going to get a much quicker smoothing out. Um, if you have ingrained lines like a piece of paper that's been folded for so long that even when it's flat it still has a crease, you need to probably do it for a year or two consistently without letting it wear off in order to actually start to lift the ingrained lines. But you'll still be improved, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you just won't, you'll still see them slightly, but they won't be allowed to deepen if you're right. not allowing them to happen. Okay, so how often should one have, like after, say, someone's initially having Botox. How often should you, or just anyone, how often should they come? What's, is there a rule of thumb or is it individual? It depends on what you're treating. So another area or condition I treat besides angry or sad looking lines on the face would be hyperhidrosis. So sweating oh. Oh. Um, and that they are different. So it depends on which one you're talking about, but probably you're talking about the cosmetic application of it. Um, think three times a year. So three and a half to four and a half months. It depends. Some right. people go longer. Right. Most people are around three and a half months. So three times a year. So does age factor into the longevity of it or is it more just your natural genetics and yeah. Okay. And the dosing of it. Right. Yeah. If you, if you do put in a higher dosing, you can get uh, more longevity out of it. Right. It's a balancing act. I like a natural look. I don't want you to look like you've had it done. So, um, and if you think about Hollywood stars or mm -hmm. people who are on camera all the time, they don't want to be frozen. That's not a good look. Right. So they tend to get baby Botox where they get less more often. Right. Just so that they have it softened, but still look natural. Actually, I think it was, um, it was an actress that Robin Wright Penn, I remember reading an article that she says she gets a sprinkle. Yeah. And that was how she ages well. And I yeah. thought that's really well, great. Well, I've got it in right now, but this is about how I like it. Yes. So you're it, still, exactly. Still it can be very natural. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. And I think that probably even just for myself and my age, that is one of the biggest misconceptions yeah. is with beauty and the beauty industry right now and what's on social media is a very different look than what I'm going for. Yeah. So a lot of people immediately think, well, I don't want to look like that. But it, it, that's where I think it is important to find a practitioner yes. that you have the same beauty alignment yes. or you yes. want the same things. And that's something that I instantly drew to you and to say, <laughs> like just talking because you do, you have that approach that I want the best version of yes. my patients. I want them to be natural and the best versions of themselves. And beauty is very individual. Yeah. You know, there's no judgment, right or wrong. It's just, it has to be individual. And I think that's where finding a practitioner that wants or sees the same for you is very important. So, well, yeah, I think, um, I think we talked about this before, but if your injector looks unnatural, mm -hmm. you don't resonate with how they look, then maybe they're not the right person for you because right. that's obviously what they're choosing. Right. And I think those are some very valid points and education tips for someone who may not have it or who is with someone and wants to try a different approach to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were saying earlier that it's also good for headaches? Headaches, 
migraines. Um, yeah, if you have chronic migraines, you can actually get some coverage from your third party insurance. There is an administration fee, but often the Botox, the cost of the Botox itself will be um, covered. And then there's also hyperhidrosis, which is an awesome remedy for that. So um, excessive sweating, right? So if you're one of those people that say you have to public speak and you find that you're always getting wet mm -hmm. under, mm -hmm. under your arms, and there's other places on the body where people sometimes want treatment, like scalps, that kind of thing. Um, it can really dampen the, the sweat response in a really safe way. Interesting. It's not invasive. It lasts longer too. Really? Yeah, like you'd probably need to do that, I'd say most people twice a year instead of three times a year. Um, some people go longer than that. It also depends on how much you put in. Right. So there's, yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it is, I, I think it's an amazing drug. Yeah, it, it really is for a multitude of reasons, and I, it's used in all parts of medicine. Yes, like urology. There's um, certain types of incontinence it can help with, and bladder spasms. People, babies, um, who I actually have a friend whose um, child was born with club feet, and they mm. actually used in a baby Botox instead of surgery to help relax the tight parts that create the club feet. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's it. And, and I think... Cerebral palsy, people with um, neck spasm, cervical dystonia, there's all Yes, you can also use it in the jaw, correct? Yes. Oh, yes. For um, TMJs. So yes. Like people who grind their teeth. You can go through a lot fewer um, mouth guards. Right. If you can relax the muscle that's creating that, that um, grinding. Right. And also the pain from TMJ, so temporomandibular joint dysfunction. So very yeah, interesting. Amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? And mm -hmm. I think that is hopefully one thing as well that gets across is that it is it it doesn't have to be unnatural. It can be used yeah. for a multitude of things and it's just figuring out what best suits you, whether it be aesthetically or medically. Yeah. I know myself I suffer from migraines and it was something at one time that um I looked into and I think that was my initial mm -hmm start of Botox yeah. and you know I was like well can we just move it yeah. from here to yeah uh, so I think it I think it's amazing and it really is just finding someone who aligns with how you want to look to who's if, done the time to yes. know what they're doing and know the anatomy and so I know people are going to ask or think this does it hurt what's the pain tolerance well, you've had it done what do yes. you think <laughs> well I yeah for me it's nothing I, I, it's very worth it. it yeah, the, the, the benefits far out ex exceed any type of pain tolerance. It's very minimal, but... It, it is um, administered by an, an injection. So they're very tiny. If you're familiar with the gauges of a needle, like 32 gauge, right. it's tiny. Right. So And you hardly feel it. And we draw it up in such a way that we're... Um, only injecting so many times with one needle because every injection blunts it a little bit and then it hurts a bit more. So gotcha. we only have so many times we want to use one in one area and then we draw up some more into another syringe. Men, women, both? Oh, they, they do it. You yes. want um, someone who knows what they're doing. You don't want to feminize a man. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure, like the placement's different. Right. Eyebrows on a man should not have a shape like eyebrows on women. Right. So they, that needs Very to be good. And then need Very good point. more because they are, have bigger muscles that are creating the lines. Right. Interesting. All right. Well, is there anything that you would like to add that I haven't asked regarding uh, Botox? It's very quick. Oh, I guess. Yes. And there's no downtime. I mean, if you get a bit of a bruise, we do, we have things we do to minimize mm -hmm. that, but you could come in and out really quickly and have it done. And, and yes, it's at very, work and, yes. Okay, well, that was amazing. I hope that helps uh, anyone who's questioning Botox or yeah. wanted a little bit more information. I am pro -bo Botox. So <laughs> I think you're it's on amazing. board. I'm on board. I'm well, on board. I think the main um, fear is that you'll love it and then you want to keep doing it. Well, this is amazing. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I love this topic. That will conclude this episode of Be the Best Version of You. Thank you, Dr. Bentley, always a pleasure talking to you. Until next time, thank you. Yes, my pleasure.